Let's close our eyes for prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for this privilege. We have once again to come before you. Thank you because you've chosen us, anointed, appointed us, so we can be leaders in the kingdom, leaders in the church of the living God. We're asking, O oh Lord, that your calling will be effectual in every life of ours in Jesus' name. And we pray, Lord, that all your servants, men and women that you have chosen call to yourselves so they can serve you so we can serve you we are praying lord your work will prosper in our hands in jesus name that every section of the work you are placed your people will experience growth maturity development success in jesus name be with us this time again thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray and the people of god said amen please be seated we're coming back to our leadership series and you remember what you've been singing just before the leadership a message keep me true lord keep me true keep me true lord jesus keep me true keep me true lord jesus keep me true there is a race I must run. There is a big tree to be one. Give me power every hour to be true. Keep me clean. Keep me clean, Lord Jesus. Keep me clean. Keep me clean, Lord jesus keep me clean there is a race i must run there is a big tree to be one give me power every hour to be clean keep me deep keep me deep lord Jesus, keep me deep. Sing aloud. Keep me deep, Lord Jesus, keep me deep. There is a victory to be won. Give me power every hour. Keep us one, keep us one, Lord Jesus, keep us one, unity. Keep us one, Lord Jesus, keep us one. There's a race we must run. There's a victory to be won. Give us power every hour to be true again keep us one there is a race we must run there is a victory to be one give us power every hour to be true keep me true keep me true keep me true lord jesus keep me true there is a race I must run. There is a big tree to be one. Give power every hour to be true. Amen. You can please sit down. God bless every one of you. We're looking at Joshua chapter 11 verse 15. Joshua chapter 11 verse 15. As the Lord commanded Moses, his servant, so did Moses command Joshua. And so did Joshua. He left nothing undone of all that the Lord commanded 
Moses. Link that up with Joshua chapter 24. Joshua chapter 24 verse 31. And Israel served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders that overlived Joshua. Which had known all the works of the Lord. That he had done for Israel. You're looking at the word of God taking root and being effective from one generation to the other. Moses got the message. He gave it to Israel. And then Joshua took the baton of leadership. And then he also effectively obeyed the Lord. And he kept the people of God in the will of God in the message of life. And then when he left the elders that succeeded him they also continued as well that's why we're looking at leadership now as a sustainer the leadership or the leader as a sustainer actually god given visions need to be sustained but as you look at the history of churches and the history of great men of god you're going to discover number one you have a ministry when the man gets started when the founder gets started, like John Wesley of the Methodist Church, when he got started, that was a ministry. And then eventually it will move from a ministry to a movement. It becomes a movement in another generation. Before you know what is happening, that movement will move on and become a machine. And it's just like, you know, they will not run the machine. It's like a machinery. The administration goes on, the operation goes on, but there's no life in it anymore. Eventually, from a machine, it moves to a monument. Now, it's dead and nominal and ineffective. And that is what you will find in very many places, in very many ministries. First, a ministry. And second, a movement. And third, a machine, machinery. And then third, a, a, a monument. For that not to happen, the leader must be a sustainer for the thing not to become dead ineffective and useless and worthless the leader must be a sustainer and in this case the lord jesus christ again is our model he was a sustainer look at what he started more than two thousand years ago and he passed it on to the apostles and those apostles passed it on to the next generation persecution came Many people were scattered. In fact, some people were killed. I'm sure you've had the name of Polycarp before. And of course, you have had Abel Stephen. Many people lost their lives. Even those apostles, many of them lost their lives, except John the Beloved. And yet, even though the persecution becoming intense, the Lord Jesus Christ had passed on the message very much to the point that the next generation, they took it up. And the following generation took it up. And now it has come to us. And the whole Bible is preserved for us. There is a sustaining uh, level or there is a sustaining agent that has preserved everything for us. As we look at Jesus Christ as a model, a model leader, a sustainer. You are asking yourself, how did he sustain the vision? How did he sustain the ministry? Well, just read the Gospels and then summarize everything you see in the Gospel contributing to the sustaining of the ministry. Number one, he saved, sanctified and secured the sheep. He called the sheep the lost sheep. He called them into the fold. He saved them. He sanctified them. And he secured them. He made sure they were secured in the fold. Of all the people you have given me, I lost none except the son of perdition, that the scripture may be fulfilled. If we are going to sustain the ministry, what's the first thing that we're really wanting to effectively achieve? To get the people saved. And to get them sanctified. And then to secure them in the fold. Number two. He selected and shaped his servants. He selected them, he shaped them, he sharpened them. That those disciples, those people that were being born again, he was selecting them. Leaders that he selected. Servants of God that he selected. And he shaped them and he sharpened them. And then he made their focus to be what he thought to be. And if we are going to sustain the ministry, we also should be looking at the servants of the Lord. The upcoming leaders. We're selecting them. We're shaping them. We're sharpening them. Number three, he shared and showed the standard. The standard, what he got from the Father. He said, I brought to you 
what I got from the Father. I've not hidden anything away from you at all. He shared the standard with them and he showed the standard to them. He demonstrated the standard before them. It is not like do as I say and don't do as I do. He showed them, he demonstrated it to them. If we are going to sustain the ministry that God has now planted through us, we need to share the standard and we need to show the standard. Number four, he sacrificed himself for the sheep and for the servants. For the church, he gave himself. For the world, he gave himself. So, for the sheep and for the servants, he sacrificed himself. If we are going to sustain the ministry, we must sacrifice self. Sacrifice self. Uh, we just know that the vision is bigger than the man. The ministry is bigger than the man. And therefore, it is, you don't consider yourself anymore. God has given you something worth dying for. In fact, I think it's uh, Martin Luther uh, King Jr. that said, if you don't have anything worth dying for, you don't have anything worth living for. And if it is so important, so essential, that you can die for it, then you can live for it. You sacrifice self. You know that those things, uh, things that are personal, they don't matter to you anymore. Your convenience and your ease and, you know, what I appreciate, what I like, what I don't like, all those things have gone overboard because, uh, you know, you want to sustain the ministry that the Lord has given you. Then number five, he symbolized and set the strategy. He symbolized and set the strategy. And while he was doing that, his disciples were watching him. How he preached the gospel of the kingdom. How he went from city to city and village to village. How he responded to the political people. How he remained courageous and unmoved, unmovable, uncompromising. In the face of persecution and difficulties and tough situations. He actually set the strategy and symbolized the strategy. Number six, he sent his spirit to his servants. He imparted his spirit unto his servants. And if we are going to if we are going to keep this work and we're going to keep the ministry and sustain the ministry, there must be the impartation of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God. Not only that, we must allow the influence of our own spirit to rub on the people so that as we have the mind of Christ and the spirit of Christ the people today have the same spirit with us the same heart with us and the same fervency with us and the same goal with us and the same vision with us he sent a spirit to his disciples you know if we do it at this time now and then we pass that same spirit and that same strategy and that same standard and that same security and that same salvation and that same message we pass it on to the next generation if the same generation if that same generation will do as we have done and they pass it to the next generation and they are also keeping the standard and there is no cell and there is the feeling in feeling of the spirit of god and they are also doing the work like we have done it that's the third generation now they pass it to the first generation all it takes is just for every individual to be as faithful as the founder and to be as faithful as the person that the lord used to originate the vision or to bring the vision to us and then number seven he sustained his success he sustained his success if we will do it at this time and then we pass it on to the next generation in all the various ways that are possible to uh, pass it on to the next generation then we will be sustaining what the lord has given us in short the leader must be a sustainer it's not enough to say well we've done our best we must sustain the ministry. Look at Jesus Christ again. Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 19. Matthew chapter 28. I'm reading from verse 19. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost, teaching them to observe all things that are to sustain the ministry. I've given it to you. You will now go and teach all nations, baptizing them, and you'll be teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I've commanded you. And lo, I am with you always. I'll be with you. I'll be watching you. And I'll be seeing how you are passing it on. How you are sustaining the ministry until, even until the end of the world. And then we're told in 2 Timothy chapter 2 verse 2 how to sustain the ministry. How to sustain the success. How to, how to sustain this great thing the Lord has given us. 
in second timothy chapter 2 verse 2 and the things that thou hast heard of me among many witnesses the same commit thou to faithful men who shall be able to teach others also you have heard it from me starting from paul now actually it started from jesus then came to those apostles in jerusalem and then came to paul the apostle and paul passing it on to timothy and to a lot of other people and then timothy was to pass it on to faithful men and those faithful men should be people that can teach others also passing it on from generation to generation so that the ministry does not eventually become a monument but it remains a ministry i'm going to divide the message to three parts number one selected supporters with the sustainer leader the sustainer who is the leader selected supporters with the sustainer leader number two strengthening spirit for the sustainer leader the spirit that comes to strengthen the leader and that same spirit strengthens the people who are receiving the message number three sustaining strategies of the sustainer leader sustaining strategies of the leader who is to sustain the ministry we come to number one selected supporters with the sustainer leader as a leader our priority must be that we selected supporters those who will support the vision those who will support the ministry those who will give their lives to propagate and to promote the ministry those who will do the same work with us and they're already doing it before we leave sometimes the problem with some ministry says they say yes we know that uh, we need successors and we need people that will continue the ministry after we have gone but when we have gone then they will they'll come into it let them come into it while you're still alive and you're ministering together and they're making their mistakes and you are correcting them and you're doing the work together then you know that they have got exactly the thing don't you see the lord jesus christ he knew that they got what was passing across and what he needed to correct he corrected and then eventually he passed it on to them fully in exodus chapter 18 i'm reading from verse 20 and verse 21 and thou shalt teach them ordinances and laws and shall show them uh, have you seen what i read there i didn't say she'll show them you know they, you need to understand and, and the way i improve my reading of the bible is i listen to uh, the audio cassette of the bible or the cd of the bible uh, because uh, you know alexa scobie is still the best of them all and when you listen you will see how he pronounces those words and it's still king james version too and then it says shall show them the way wherein they must walk and the work that they must do that he is as a leader you select those supporters you select those servants of god and select the upcoming leaders and you show them the work that they must do moreover thou shalt provide out of the people able men able men and you make them able and you encourage them to get it done hating covetousness and place such over them to be rulers of thousands and rulers of hundreds and rulers of fifties and rulers of tens uh, do you notice something here now a person does not remain static all through his life when he was selected as a supporter when he was selected as an assistant worker when he was selected as a person to help you assist in the work maybe he was just a ruler over things i hope you are not leaving him there for 20 years i hope you are moving him up that after he has led them 10 people he has been leading and he's led them effectively now they became 15 or 25 or even 27 and then you move him up he then begins to lead the 50s and i hope you are not leaving them in that place all the time i'm sure that you are watching over them you're looking at their work you are correcting them where they need correction and then you're moving them up the ladder and they become the rulers of hundreds and i hope you are not leaving them there either and then eventually they become rulers of thousands and then it's not that you must you know uh, go systematically from you know 10 uh, to 50 and to hundreds and to thousands because it's possible for some people to jump at uh, the queue 
don't you know some of our children that get this double promotion and they were in, in class one and not because they are very uh, bright and they're different from all the other children they are not working at the same pace with the other children you move them from class one and you move them to class three even some of you know some children geniuses they are they move from one and they move to four and they still do well and that's what happened to paul the apostle he moved right from a new convert he moved to a preacher and he didn't go through all the process of all the other apostles that they went through and you'll see even the gifts of god in his life the power of god in his life and what he was able to do he didn't have to move from 10 to the 50 to the 100 and to the thousand and i told you in the other message i gave uh, the other time when i was talking about the the seeker that is the leader as a seeker and as a seer uh, i told you about paul the apostle and we need to be careful and reemphasize it because repetition makes for emphasis look at the forms we have those forms are good and look at the system well, that system is wonderful it's very good all i'm saying is there are exceptions to the rule the exceptions to the rule if you will give that form to paul and then you say fill that form and you say are you married no i'm I, i'm not married all right we can allow you to lead house fellowship we might allow you to be a zona leader but never a coordinator that's a general rule that's all right if it's general that's all right if he does not disqualify paul because he wasn't married and nobody should complain that we'll pick up paul and we'll say we know you are not married we don't want to ask the reason why you're not married and normally the rule is you are not married you don't have a wife you cannot even be a coordinator not to talk of group coordinator not to talk of region overseer in fact when we interview them we interview the husband we interview the wife and if you don't have a wife who are we going to interview as your wife and how can you be a state overseer without be being married except you are paul if you are paul you can be a state overseer you can be a national overseer without getting married the point is when we are selecting these supporters when we are selecting these assistant leaders and we're grooming them and we're growing them and we're guiding them so that they can be what they ought to be the general rules are there and the general rule appears to almost everybody except people like paul there are exceptions please always notice that and uh, if we didn't know that it's paul and we came to your area and we find somebody who has been appointed to be a coordinator a group coordinator of course we are going to challenge you we're going to say ah, are you not following headquarters don't you understand the rule if you're going to be a group coordinator a coordinator you, your wife must be in the church your wife must be born again then you'll be able to explain to us yes i know the rule I know that's a general thing but because i see that this is a different man and this is a paul that's the reason we've given him the challenge to carry it on therefore let's make the choices we're making and look at the word of god and be able to get all these people that will help us help with us in the ministry we're looking at deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 and 2 deuteronomy chapter 4 verses 1 and two now therefore hearken o israel unto the statutes and unto the judgments and which i teach you for to do them that they may live that she may live and go in and possess the land which the lord god of your fathers giveth you ye shall not add unto the word which i command you neither shall ye diminish aught from it that ye may keep the commandments of the lord your god which i command you that ye may keep the commandments of your god which i i, I delivered unto you have commanded you will not add to the word that's to the message will not detract or remove from the message ah but you see but you're talking about paul and that we can make a paul a minister and uh, you know the, he must also uh, you know even though he's not married he can be an apostle am i the one that made paul the apostle is it not god that made uh, him the apostle and see this see this even paul himself as was saying it is good to, if you want to be a bishop you desire a good work and the bishop must be blameless and the and the husband of one wife ah paul how could you write that you are not married yourself husband of one wife i'm writing by inspiration i'm not married god selected me but then he also gave me inspiration to write to timothy and said whoever de uh, whoever desired the office of a bishop must be the husband of one wife that i'm not married is does not mean i'm not going to yield to inspiration 
the inspiration the Lord is giving is that when you decide the office of a bishop, we want to appoint you, we are going to interview you. This is what we are going to find out. Are you married? One wife is your home in control. We are going to check up. And the fact that I'm not married does not mean I'm going to remove from the word of God. And yet God may raise up people like me, like Paul, that has not gotten married and doesn't have any family and when god does that and he makes an exception we're going to keep to the exception that the lord is given i pray god will give us understanding and then we will not lose a lot of people that we have lost and now and now i'm going to you know uh, scratch you a little where you are itching uh, because you understand all these general rules we're talking about and we're not taking away from the general rule uh, can I tell you, for example, somebody is uh, working in the government house and as he's working in the government house, he believes he's a member of our church and he believes everything that we believe. The only thing is he must listen to the news over the television and he must know what is going on. Otherwise, he's not going to fit into the work he's uh, doing at the presidency. And uh, we are choosing house fellowship leaders. And we have the general rule and the rule is there. And I accept the rule. And I, I give an okay to the rule. I'm part of the rule myself. And uh, that if we're going to use his house for, uh, you know, fellowship, no television and don't don't be a hypocrite and don't go and hide the thing inside your room that's what we tell them and this man comes to us and he says i'm born again i'm sanctified i'm filled with the holy ghost but i'm working with the presidency and in the presidency and this is my job and i need to listen to the news and i'm not going to be a hypocrite i have a television inside my room and the television I, I don't even have time to watch them but it's part of my job it's very compulsory for me these media people if we don't uh, watch them they're going to you know instigate the society against the government and the president you know i have the responsibility i have to watch that and that's only the only thing i watch all their games and all the other things i'm not i don't even have the time i'm so busy and then but there are a lot of people who are highly placed and i know that the lord is giving me vision and i can be part of the system and i can work for the lord and please uh, why don't you also get me to uh, you know get to the congress too so that if i know more i'll be able to influence all these people and then we'll say you want to get me into trouble if the gs uh, you know is going around and sees you and who knows because you know you can never predict him you might just say what's your name and where are you coming from oh i'm coming from abuja ah, 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 wonderful what work are you doing there and then this and this by the way because you know he just asks any question he may ask any question do you have television <laughs> and then you say yes then you are going to get me into trouble the pastor will not jump at you come and jump at me the overseer and then i get into trouble and because i don't want to get into trouble i know you have a ministry i know what you can do but i'm sorry why it not for the gs or have appointed you but i don't want to get into trouble what we're saying is the general rule is there the general rule is there but there are people that do not fit into that general rule and god is calling them and they can work for the lord and we don't throw away these people because they are exceptions i hope we understand i said i hope we understand and we'll follow through in jesus name and then we're looking at uh, we're looking at uh, the word of god in uh, luke chapter 10 luke chapter 10 i'm reading from verse 17. luke chapter 10 we're looking at you from verse 17 here are the 70 people that jesus christ chose and the 70 returned again with joy saying lord even the devils are subject unto us through thy name the lord chose 12 and then after that he chose the 70 we should choose people too and we should not limit our influence upon only the district uh, pastors only the district coordinators only the group uh, coordinators we should stretch ourselves out the 12 were there and the 12 were useful already and then he brought in the 70. now when we bring in these people what do we do to them as we help them to move up the ladder of leadership number one teach them you're teaching them doctrine you're teaching them personality development you're teaching them practical issues you're teaching them administration you're teaching them quite a lot of things teach them number two transform them transform them their way of thinking their way of talking their way of their worldview transform them transform them and lead them from where they are to where they ought to be 
uh, do not worry about the fact that they are not all they ought to be now they are rough in their language and sometimes uh, they are not even quite all right in their grammar and uh, sometimes you'll find a preacher you have appointed a preacher to preach at the retreat and he's making some serious grammatical mistakes but before you talk look at those mistakes those mistakes are just in the tense of when he says they instead of saying they see he might say they sees and then instead of saying he sees he might say he see just just a tense and you look at everything he says so all through the message he has the vocabulary he has the knowledge he has the verses he has everything he has the doctrine and it's just it's a, it's modeled up in the tenses and it doesn't take a week to correct him on that don't throw him away and don't disqualify him. just call him and say brother um, i know you are consecrated and yielded to the lord you are doing your best but you know you're going to do better if you can take care of just one simple thing this is it we say i see he sees they see just that repeat that after me and then he repeats then you pick another verb you do that again pick another verb and do that again and say can you do something get back home and as you go back home tell your wife if he's married if he's not paul you understand and tell your wife when you uh, we're going to be speaking english now for some time in this house we're not going to speak vernacular and when you catch me saying this is stop me and say no this see let his wife help him let those who are close to him help him and then you call him again after about a few weeks or one month how are you doing with uh, that thing we spoke about uh, let me test you and uh, here is uh, here is another verb no tell me now conjugate and everything i know he knows and they know wonderful now you're going to tell me another translate he translates i translate and they translate uh -huh. that is all, that's exactly what to do then you bring him up again to preach if you are training people if you are transforming people you're going to give them chance to practice what you are training them on then you bring him on and you're going to discover he is not going to make as many mistakes as he made one month ago he might still make one or two then call him again as this was wonderful now if you tell him ah i'm so surprised i thought you told me that you were changing you know there was still a mistake there how could you do that i told you before now look at it say it this way no you will commend him first you congratulate him first this is better than the other time only that you had a little sleep two times and this is what you said but it's not a serious matter i don't think him, even think the congregation will notice that encourage him and then teach him again and reinforce what you are telling him bring him back to the pulpit again that's how to help you People. you are transforming them you are helping them that they will be the qualified leaders that they ought to be number three treat them tenderly number one you teach them number two you transform them number three you treat them tenderly tenderly number four train them actually the whole process is a process of training train them and then number five test and try them test and try them when you delegate something to them and you supervise them and you comment them and you correct them and you put them back on their feet again you are you are testing them you are trying them number six trust them trust them if anybody reports any of your leaders to you don't take any action yet trust them I call them my brother i had a report please don't ask me who told me that's not the important thing i had a report i had that this this and this is it true even if it is true i'm not going to crucify you when the process of training if it is true tell me and then i'll be able to help you more well pastor it is not true that's all right don't even explain if you tell me it's not true i leave you to your conscience between you and god I accept it's not true and i'm not going to get back to the other fellow but you told me so and such and such about so and so not necessary and that's something you don't want to drag in your life you don't want to ma maintain you don't want to you know spend your life on non-essentials the fellow thought this fellow has done this he reported to me i've done my duty i've checked off from him and he said it's not true and then i leave it I allow him to go if it's not a serious matter that uh, you know we need to really investigate but if he told me pastor actually it is true uh -huh so you you could say that about me because the fellow said you said something like this about me pastor i was careless i know i shouldn't have said that please forgive me all right that's all right uh, but don't say that again and then we act as if nothing ever happened you are training them suppose he was your child and he said something foolish about about daddy about you and all the children reported your child to you that your child said this about you and then you ask him my boy 
did you say this about me when they call you to ask a question uh, to answer a question in the school and then you say that daddy's english is not uh, very good and then uh, you know your child became sober daddy i was careless i didn't know i said don't say that again respect daddy you understand if they ask you any question in your school and you're going to answer don't relate the answer back to me i'm your daddy you hear then it's all over that's how you do to your children and that's how you do to the people you are training in the church let's change let's turn around and let us understand we are helping the people to grow up you trust them and then number seven you need to be careful on what i'm going to say now on this number seven transfer them thoughtfully transfer them thoughtfully that is let them go up in the ladder of usefulness that's what we're saying transfer them thoughtfully not you're not transferring them because you are getting even with them and because you want to punish them for something you are transferring them thoughtfully i come to point number two strengthening spirit for the sustainer leader strengthening spirit for the sustainer leader if uh, we're going to sustain the ministry and the work we must uh, have the spirit of god we're looking at isaiah chapter 59 isaiah chapter 59 i'm reading from verse 21 isaiah chapter 59 i'm reading from verse 21 in verse 21 of isaiah chapter 59 as for me this is my covenant with them says the lord my spirit that is upon thee and my words which i have put in thy mouth shall not depart out of thy mouth nor out of the mouth of thy seed nor out of the mouth of the seed seed says the lord from his forth and forever you'll see here the transfer of the spirit because it says your Self, I put my spirit on you and then I put my spirit on your seed and then I put my spirit upon your seeds seed so it goes on from generation to generation and even it says from henceforth even forever that means then if we're going to sustain the ministry we need the spirit of the Lord upon us actually Jesus promised the spirit of the Lord the spirit of God the Holy Spirit the Holy Ghost to his own disciples in John chapter 14 verse 16 john chapter 14 we're reading verse 16 john chapter 14 verse 16 and i will pray the father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever another comforter that he may abide with you forever that means after the spirit has been given to us then it ought to pass on to the leaders to the upcoming leaders and then to the other people who are leaders under them then to the members of the whole church because it's to abide with us forever even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not neither knoweth him but ye know him for he dwelleth with you and shall be in you he dwelleth with you and shall be in you chapter 15 verse 2 no this is chapter 14 verse 26 but the comforter which is the holy ghost whom the father will send in my name he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever i have said unto you that's also how to sustain the ministry the lord jesus christ had taught his own disciples but they could forget and if they forgot the ministry will not be sustained but he will send them the holy spirit and that holy spirit will remind them of the things he taught them before and will teach them all things that's how the ministry will be sustained in john chapter 15 verse 26 but when the comforter is come whom the father will send unto you from the whom i will send unto you from the father even the spirit of truth which proceedeth from the father he shall testify of me he will keep my portrait my personality my ministry my vision my goal in front of you every time he shall testify of me and you'll keep on seeing me you'll keep on remembering what i had taught the spirit will do that that's how to, how to sustain the ministry chapter 16 of john i'm reading from verse 7 chapter 15 from verse 7 nevertheless i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you and when he is come he will reprove the world of sin and of righteousness
righteousness and of judgment of sin because they believe not on me of righteousness because i go to my father and you see me no more of judgment because the prince of this world is judged i have yet many things to say unto you but ye cannot bear them now I have many things to say unto you, but ye cannot bear them now. How be it when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide you into all truth. That's why we need the spirit of God to sustain the ministry. That the spirit of God comes upon us. And then that spirit of God makes us to remember all things that he has taught. And then he guides us into all truth. Uh, let, let's uh, let's let's pay attention here now. Let's reason together. Uh, do you know some uh, you know Pentecostal uh, people denominations? Of course, I'm sure you know them. How you see that there is so much change from one generation to the other, and yet the Holy Spirit should remind us of the things we learned from we learned from the beginning and shall guide us into all truth. Can I uh, submit this to you? In many of those Pentecostal churches. The ministry of the Holy Ghost that is emphasized, that is singled out, isolated, is speaking in tongues. Speaking in tongues. And they do not understand the speaking in tongues alone does not sustain the ministry. But it is when the Holy Spirit comes and he guides us into all truth and it reminds us of scripture you know sometimes you are looking at a particular you are looking at a particular topic i'm sure you are preachers it has happened to you and you are trying to prepare a message you know the verse and the verse is floating in your head in your mind you can't really remember exactly how it is and what i normally do is that i will stop i put my pen down and then i'll bend my head because i trust i've done that a number of times and you know the lord has always answered me i just i just say lean over and i generally just you know you well i have a mannerism so i'll normally do this and just say lean my head on my hand and then i'll say lord i have your spirit give me this scripture and then when i say that it may not come immediately then i keep on writing other things and then it, within five minutes it will come generally it will come and uh, sometimes i'm preparing the message in the night and i'm looking for you know all these divisions that i do it's not that it's always easy sometimes it's in the night i'm preparing the message and sometimes i i go till one o'clock like uh, this uh, week i was uh, preparing one of these uh, messages and i read this material read this material i was looking for all, all that i needed and uh, you know i wanted to divide and the thing will not come and uh, so my wife said are you not ready to sleep i said i'm preaching you know this series and i have to i cannot just get there and open my mouth and you know be opening my mouth air will come out you know just playing with her and then she said i know you air will not come i said i don't know the secret i said go and sleep and then till one o'clock i was there and the thing will not come then i just said lord give it to me thank you in jesus name i closed my bible closed everything and then i went to sleep i woke up in the morning and the first thing that appeared to me this 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 and then i went to the table put it down because it will always come that's the ministry of the holy spirit it's imparted unto you in jesus name and so it says he will guide you into all truth and whatsoever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he will show you the spirit of god will work mightily in our lives in jesus name we're told in ephesians chapter 5 ephesians chapter 5 i'm looking at verse 18 ephesians chapter 5 verse 18 and be not drunk with wine when in is excess but be filled with the spirit be filled with the spirit and let me just summarize that second point if we're going to have the strengthening spirit so that we can sustain the ministry number one request and receive the help of the spirit request and receive the help of the spirit number two reckon and rely on his inner strength that it will strengthen you in the inner man you know sometimes you are tired and, and you are thinking can i go another way can i can i follow another path can i still do this uh, last week uh, we i was uh, you know to go and do the congress for them in europe and uh, because uh, over here in lagos i must come back on sunday i must come back for sunday service because we have only three uh, sundays the 6th and the 13th and the 28th and if i didn't do that we we'll want to start the reconstruction of the work at the at the bagada uh, just uh, next monday so i must have that sunday worship everything must be complete 
and their, pro uh, their producer program and as their producer program i was to teach everything in the congress that he saw my leadership a series that i was to do and uh, and they attend you understand l for love and you know and so you you know it all and then i said what am i going to do if i am going to come back on saturday i must leave london on friday if i'm going to leave london on friday i must leave like in the afternoon and then they were starting on thursday that means you know you have thursday then you have half of a friday then i must come to france and then come to nigeria on saturday 10 messages how will i do that i didn't know i could have the strength but i told our seer there i said now we're going to adjust the program i'm going to do all my leadership series 10 of them thursday and friday and then his mother and said you'll do that i said that's exactly what i'm going to do and i was saying that by faith and then i got there i got there on wednesday and then on thursday i began and i did six on thursday and the people said they had never had anything on leadership like that before and then friday came and i did four making ten and it was after i finished the ten that when i announced to them that i have to go back to nigeria that is why i brought everything together for the faith clinic the cases are with you listen to the cases for the faith clinic i've tried i've given you ten i'm coming back to nigeria then i came on uh, i came on saturday before i got here on saturday i needed to prepare the message for sunday because i'll come in the night and i cannot get to bagara and just open my mouth and you know i must give out something i say i time to prepare my message when you ask the holy spirit to give you inner strength he will do it i said he will do it number three relax and rest in the spirit no agitation no worry no anxiety relax and rest in the spirit number four refresh and release self to the spirit release yourself to the spirit refresh yourself with the word of god uh, you know what i've done i uh, sometimes you know you have a people in the church that can help you i needed the promises of god and i know that i didn't have time to extract it from the tapes myself so i called somebody i said uh, you know uh, pastor needs something would you do this for me and he said yes i'll do anything you want me to do i said go and help me and extract all the promises of the bible and then extract it into just one cd for me i want to be listening to that and then he went ahead and did it and extracted all the promises of the bible for me and then so when i want to refresh myself just just to rest in the lord and to release myself to the spirit of god i just put uh, that cd on and he sent me the promises of god for this and for this and for this and i go through that and uh, sometimes uh, when i'm listening to that i ask myself well, do you think you are going to remember all this i said don't worry about that i re you know i tell i ask the question myself i also tell myself don't worry about that because i've learned when i'm not thinking i'll remember something that's when i remember and so help yourself refresh yourself so you can release yourself in the spirit number five readjust and restrain self-talk in your spirit what self-talk i cannot i'm not able to do that i'm only a child i'm not like the gs i don't have experience i cannot achieve that all these that they are saying is above me that's self-talk and that kind of self-talk will be binding you and will be incapacitating you will be weakening you therefore you readjust your self-talk i can do all things through christ who strengthens me the spirit of the lord dwells within me and if the spirit that raised up jesus christ dwell in your mortal body it will quicken your mortal body say not say not there are yet four months to the harvest it is time this is the time to do it arise and do it and therefore your self-talk the things you say to yourself you will adjust them number six remember and rehearse past acts of the spirit what the lord did with you in the past by the spirit of god rehearse them and re and, and they remember them number seven respond to the reactivation of the spirit of god respond to the reactivation of the spirit of god we're looking at point number three now sustaining strategies of the sustainer leader sustaining strategies of the sustainer leader in second timothy chapter one second timothy chapter one in second timothy chapter one we're looking at verse 13 and at verse 14 second timothy chapter one verse 13 and verse 14 
Hold fast the form of sound words which thou hast heard of me in faith and love which is in Christ Jesus that good thing which was committed unto thee keep by the Holy Ghost which dwelleth in us the good thing that has been given unto us let us keep by the Holy Ghost chapter 2 verse 2 this is how to sustain these are the strategies we need to sustain the ministry and the things that thou hast learnt of me heard of me among many witnesses the same commit to faithful men who shall be able to teach all others also chapter 3 reading from verse 12 chapter 3 verse 12 yea and all that will live godly in christ jesus shall suffer persecution but evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived but continue thou in the things which thou hast learnt and her and hast been assured of knowing of whom thou hast learnt them that is how to sustain the ministry continue and that for and that from a child that was known the holy scriptures which are able to make the wise unto salvation through faith which is in christ jesus all scripture is given by inspiration of god and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction for instruction in righteousness that the man of god may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good works keep to that word and the ministry will be sustained chapter 4 reading from verse 1 chapter 4 verse 1 i charge thee therefore before god and the lord jesus christ who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom preach the word be instant in season out of season reprove rebuke exhort without long suffering and doctrine for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine but after their own laws shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables but watch thou in all things endure afflictions do the work of an evangelist make full proof of thy ministry and then it tells us in chapter 4 of first timothy first timothy chapter 4 reading from verse 6 first timothy chapter 4 verse 6 if thou put the brethren in remembrance of these things thou shalt be a good minister of jesus christ nourished in the words of faith and of good doctrine whereunto thou hast attained that's how to sustain the ministry let, let me put it this way number one print out and publish the vision print out and publish the vision the vision the lord has given us the goal the dream the destination the ministry he has laid upon our shoulders and we're responsible for this now print it out publish it number two protect the vision don't allow anything to tamper with the vision or to tamper with the ministry protect it number three persevere and perspire to accomplish the vision persevere and perspire to accomplish the vision inspiration is there perspiration is there too number four pass on the vision undiluted unadulterated the ministry the message the vision pass it on undiluted pass it on unadulterated number five promote the vision in every possible way with your lifestyle with your encouragement with the programs with everything you're doing promote the vision promote the ministry in every possible way number six pay the price to fulfill the vision pay the price to fulfill the vision number seven prioritize the vision and produce virtuous victorious visionaries prioritize the vision make it your priority the ministry let it be the first thing in your life this ministry prioritize it and produce virtuous victorious visionaries i pray the lord will help us will become sustainers of the vision and of the ministry in jesus name let's rise up and pray the Lord will help us to accept all the people before us. We need to sustain the ministry so it will not become a monument. Let it remain a ministry, a dynamic ministry. Let's preserve it. Let's promote it. Let's pay the price, whatever it will take. The Lord will help us. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you very much for all that you have led us through. You are a good God, a gracious, great God. You are our Father. 
you are our redeemer lord jesus we bless your name you have passed the vision and the ministry and the message unto us this ministry this message this vision will be sustained in jesus name fill us with your spirit fill us with your grace and let your truth pass on from us to all the people who will be faithful with the truth with the ministry with the vision in jesus name and lord none of us will fail in the ministry we will succeed and then the people that follow after us that were training they too they will succeed in jesus name all the ministries became movements became machines and became monuments this ministry will not become a monument it will remain what you have given us in jesus name and use all your people and i pray that all my brothers and sisters who are here and those who will listen next week or any other time i pray that you will use them and use us all of us together and we will preserve this great truth you have given us in jesus name let the joy of the lord always be the strength of your people thank you lord for the answer in jesus name we pray